These minifigure stands have often popped up in the background of my videos and I've gotten a number of questions on how I make them. Of course, this is not a Harry Potter specific stand, so I am going to teach you how to make it and you can showcase your Star Wars, Marvel, Harry Potter, whatever minifigures you have on these. They're modular, expandable, it's, it's a fun system and not too difficult to make. So let's take a closer look. I initially developed this system to store my ever-growing collection of Harry Potter minifigures. And with the reboot of Harry Potter in 2018, I knew I was going to need to make something that was easily expandable. And so this is what I came up with. It's not pretty from the side, but there is definitely a purpose to this madness. I have many modules uh, that can all be connected by use of these mixel ball joints, strategically placed in three different positions. We'll be going over the larger section, which is 32 by 24 studs. For all my stands so far, I've made use of the Lego base plates. And the only reason I do that is because I have a ton from my childhood when I collected city sets with my brother. However, these can easily be replaced for any sort of plates, as these tend to get expensive. On bricks and pieces, these cost about $2.50 a piece. This more like $5. You've probably got enough spare gray plates to fill about this area much more cost effectively. So the first thing that I do with these stands is add a little detailing on the front. This is what I've come up with just because it's really cheap and easy. This here is just a one by two uh, modified brick and then the inverted slope on top. So I just line the entire front section with this. This elevates the figures from the ground a little bit really doesn't serve any purpose other than aesthetic unless you store some things underneath the module. It's a nice clean look, easy and cheap to reproduce. This whole video is just to give you an idea of what's possible when you make your own minifigure stands because I do think that's a really cool way to go about displaying your minifigures in something really specialized. For instance, if you were displaying your Star Wars minifigures here, why not have some great space greebles here, you know, just simple snot, just a bunch of gray pieces like engine work could look really cool or like could almost look like the Death Star Trench. There's so many possibilities. At one point I thought about doing, you know, a Hogwarts themed here, but then I realized I need those pieces to actually build up Hogwarts. So came up with this more generic concept, which can be used for anything. And that's why I think it's worthwhile sharing with you guys. No matter how you end up building this, you gotta make sure your connection points are consistent. And that is definitely something I've messed up in the past. For me, the open end of the ball joint goes on this side. Three studs from the edge. And also with this one, I'm actually gonna set it back one like this. So that when this side lines up, you'll see that connection obviously takes a stud gap to take place. So we don't want this, we don't want that awkward stud to be between our stands. We want that to be flush. So that's why that's there. The other side will stick all the way out to the edge, just like that. Believe it or not, the rest of this is going to be quite simple. It's just a lot of laying of brick. I'm not gonna be concerned about the colors until I get to the back. The sides are gonna be covered up by additional modules, but the back might be visible at some places. So I'm gonna to try to make that consistently all black along this edge.
If I want this space to be usable, I'm gonna have to stop putting pillars down, but I still need this to be strong enough so I can slam my minifigures down. <laughs> but basically, we don't want this to collapse while we're placing minifigures on it. So we need to prepare for that. So we're gonna need to create some arches underneath that still allow space at the very bottom to be open, but still give structural support to this thing. So the build is gonna get a bit more interesting. Of course, these can always be substituted for other similar bricks. At the end of the day, all this is is a one by four tile, one by four plate, and then another one by four tile. You can get these in bulk up to 200 at a time on bricks and pieces for 22 cents exactly, um, which is obviously higher than you'd want to pay for a single brick, but it's probably the best deal out there. And I do think it's worth the investment in this specific piece. These bricks here are gonna provide more support and because they'll be pressed down by this, they should stay in there pretty well. With another layer of the minifigure stands, we are halfway done with our huge minifigure stand. When originally designing this minifigure stand, I made some weird decisions in the placement of these. Unfortunately, I'd have to go through and change them all to change them now, but this could probably be lower. As you can see right now, it is right up here, which makes for a little bit awkward of a placement. It's still plenty strong, um, but it probably did not need to be this high on the build. Useful thing to do every once in a while is to make sure your stands actually work. As you can see here, they are lined up perfectly, except I put all the wrong things on the wrong side. When you are building these stands, always have your base model on hand if you're making another one, so you can make sure you don't make ridiculous mistakes like this. For this next part, I've basically made a brick that spans this entire gap out of plates. It's a two by 32 plated up brick. That gives us all the strength we need. It rests on some of these back parts. That leaves our last two rows. This we're gonna accomplish a little differently. We're gonna use a lot of plates to cover this final area. Also show you then how you can use bricks other than these specialized minifigure stands too. Make a section of brick in black, 32 by two studs, total of two plates high. That'll span the entire back. Then we can plate off this top area. With these completely studded surfaces, it's gonna be easy just to tile and plate the rest of these off. And would you look at that, we have a functioning Lego minifigure stand. Now, the back is totally open. I haven't put anything special in here this time around, but I'll show you some of the examples of things I've done in the past. For instance, on this smaller stand, this is actually a hinged door where inside I store the stickered and printed tiles along with a bag of Hogwarts creatures. But this makes use of that otherwise unused space. It still fits flush, but you can still open it because you can stick your finger in there. A much more extreme and specialized example is 
my main very Harry Potter part of the stand. So this back bit is obviously much taller than the one we just made. Uh, but this is another example of doors that when you spin this gear on top, you actually pop something open. It's held in place by a magnet. Both doors do the same thing. There's gears here. You can see it's just a simple Technic arm that comes around right there and pushes it open. But on the inside here, we have just all sorts of Harry Potter accessories. What I love about this one is the magnets. These, these won't fall open, whereas Maybe the smaller one, if I shook it enough, would probably open, even though it is in there pretty tight. It's a very clean mechanism and super, super fun and still all authentically Lego. This is an official Lego element. So those are just some ideas on how you can take this relatively simple stand and customize it to be anything you want. And it's infinitely expandable, so long as you got a long enough shelf. Yeah, it's a mess on the inside, but you can totally wall this up if you want. There's so many opportunities to make this your own. However, I think the design itself is very simple, approachable, relatively elegant too in its simplicity. And I like the idea that you can expand upon this. This is something I will be using for many years.